So let's continue with preparations of carboxylic acid. In the previous videos, we discussed the acidity of carboxylic acids, their nomenclature as well as their physical properties. So today we are going to look at how carboxylic acids are prepared in the laboratory. First one is the oxidation of aldehydes and primary alcohol. You have an aldehyde and you subject it to an oxidizing agent. That oxidizing agent will convert the aldehyde portion to a carboxylic acid. At the same time, if you have a primary alcohol and you subject it to an oxidizing agent, it will be oxidized to a carboxylic acid. So let's look here. This is a primary alcohol. containing three carbons. When you add an oxidizing agent, the oxidizing agent will oxidize this one and convert this alcohol functionality to a carboxylic acid group. The same thing applies to an aldehyde. An aldehyde plus an oxidizing agent will convert the aldehyde portion to a carboxylic acid group. So in the laboratory, the various oxidizing agents that are used to convert primary alcohols and aldehydes to carboxylic acids include potassium permanganate. You can also use silver oxide followed by hydrolysis. You can also use nitric acid and chromic acid. So these are all oxidizing agents which can be used to convert aldehydes or primary alcohols to carboxylic acid. Bear in mind, secondary alcohols and ketones are not oxidized under this condition unless under pressed conditions, maybe high temperature, before ketones or secondary alcohols can be converted to carboxylic acid. So for mild condition in the laboratory, it is aldehyde or primary alcohols which are converted to carboxylic acid using any of these oxidizing agents. The next preparative method of carboxylic acid is oxidation and ozonolysis of alkenes. If, you're not, if you have an alkene and you add with potassium permanganate in the base in heat followed by hydrolysis there is going to be an oxidative cleavage. So with the carbon that joins the double bond will cleave and create two carboxylic acid. So here, when this side cleaves, this side having one, two, three carbons, the other side is having one, two, three carbons. It means this side will be converted to carboxylic acid and the other side will be converted to carboxylic acid. So this one is oxidative cleavage. When you use a hot potassium permanganate, this one the condition is hot. If you use cold, it provides reduce different things altogether. So it is hot potassium permanganate, and it will cleave the alkene and convert it to two carboxylic acid groups. Next is the ozonolysis. You have an ozone added to an alkene, just like this. It performs the same function as hot potassium permanganate. The oxone will cleave the double bond here so that this end will be converted to carboxylic acid and the other end will be converted to carboxylic acid. So here's oxone followed by hydrogen peroxide hydrolysis. So you add oxone followed by the addition of hydrogen peroxide. Here there is ozonolysis, there's cleavage of this double bond. And this side will be converted to carboxylic acid, then the other end to, to carboxylic acid. So at the end, you get this carboxylic acid as one, and this one to as another carboxylic acid. So, no matter how bulky the alkene is, there's going to be a cleavage at a double bond, and each end will be converted to carboxylic acid. So, that is for the oxidation and ozonolysis of alkenes. And next is the carbonation of Grignard reagent. Carbonation of Grignard reagent. 
ichor groups having magnesium bromide attached to it are what we call the Grignard reagent. So you have a Grignard reagent, and you add carbon dioxide, followed by acid hydrolysis. We are going to produce carboxylic acid, which increases by one number of carbon. So we see if here was let's say ten carbons, this Grignard reagent has ten carbons. Then you add carbon dioxide to it, followed by acid hydrolysis. You are going to increase the number of carbons in the acre portion by one. So here you will get, let's say, 10. Sorry, 11. If here was 10, here becomes 11. If here is, let's say, 20, here becomes 21. Not for carbonation. So let's assume we, they've given you an acre chlor chloride, or sorry, acre brom bromide, or generally acre halides. When you add magnesium in ether to an acre halide, you are going to convert that acre halide to a Grignard reagent. So here there is a series of reactions. So when they give you this one and provide the final answer, you have to know that you have to add magnesium in ether to the acre halide to convert it to Grignard reagent before you can add carbon dioxide and acids to produce the final carboxylic acid. So if you have an acre halide and you add magnesium in ether to it, you convert it to a Grignard reagent. And that Grignard reagent can be converted to carboxylic acid when you add carbon dioxide followed by acid hydrolysis. The next one is hydrolysis of nitriles. Carbon nitrogen triple bond is what we call nitrile. In other contexts, they can be called cyanides. So you have a carbon nitrogen triple bond. And you hydrolyze it. You tend to eliminate the nitrogen and introduce the carboxylic acid functionality. So this is a nitrile. You add this one. You are going to get a carboxylic acid functionality. So this one is addition of acid hydrolysis of nitrile. You add an aqueous acid to a nitrile. You tend to convert the nitrile to carboxylic acid. So in the same way as we did for the Grignard reagent, if you have an acre halide, we add a sodium cyanide to an acre halide. The cyanide portion will replace the bromine. So you get this. The CN will replace the bromine or the halogen so that we get this so you can see here there were three carbons but here we get four carbons the reason being that the cyanide the cyanide is like this will replace the bromine so that we get this nitrile this is nitrile nitrile when you add aqueous acid That is the hydrolysis. You tend to convert the or eliminate the nitrogen and introduce the carboxylic acid functionality. So that's basically how carboxylic acids are synthesized. We have other synthetic measures, but for now let's focus on this one. Oxidation of aldehydes and primary alcohols. Oxidation and ozonolysis of alkenes. Carbonation of Grignard reagents. And hydrolysis of nitriles. Thank you for watching.